Good afternoon, good morning, and welcome to this webinar, the why, the how, and the what of data-driven video delivery operations, hosted by Digital TV Europe and sponsored by Divitel. I'm Stuart Thompson. I'm the editor of Digital TV Europe. Um, before we begin, let me explain how you can participate in today's presentation. First, if you have any technical difficulties during the session, please press the help button on your player console to receive assistance in solving common issues. We welcome your questions, and in order to submit those to today's presenters, simply type the question you have into the window on the right-hand side of the screen, and then hit the Submit button. We'll be answering as many questions as possible during the Q&A session that follows the main presentation, but please feel free to send in your questions at any time, and we'll add them to the queue. If at any time you're having audio difficulties or difficulties advancing the slides, hit the F5 key to refresh your webcast console. Please also be aware that today's session is being recorded and will be available on the Digital TV Europe website from tomorrow for you to uh, view. And you'll be notified by email when that is available in our archive. So uh, let me introduce today's presenters. Um, we have Dr. Gaber Molnar, who is uh, evangelist video services and science at Divitel. Gibber supplies his experience in innovation management and data science to the business practices of Divitel. He's also an academic lecturer and researcher. He's affiliated to the University of Colorado in the US and the Wittenberg University of Applied Science in the Netherlands. As a business development professional, he has over 20 years of experience in the high tech industry. Uh, we also have Walter Slot, who is Chief Operating Officer at Divitel. Walter is responsible for Divitel's ongoing operations and procedures, including information security and data protection practices. His experience and leadership is focused on operational excellence with a data-driven approach for the development and management of outstanding production systems. Uh, Walter has over 25 years of experience in running operations in various mission critical environments, and he has a successful track record in the domains of aerospace and video services. Uh, so with that, I'd like to hand over to Gabor for the first part of today's presentation. Gabor. Thank you, Stuart, and good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone, depending on where you are. First of all, thank you, Digital TV, for the opportunity to speak today, and for those who are listening in, Welcome to our webinar. As Stuart mentioned, in this session, we are going to talk about the why, the how, and the what of data-driven operations in video distribution. Together with my colleague, we're going to cover four topics today. First, I'm going to talk about the business reasons why you need to have not just good, but perfect video delivery operations. Then I will speak about why an end-to-end -end approach is needed to keep quality under control and I will also talk about the different aspects of quality. After that, I will hand the microphone over to my colleague, Walter, who will dive into the details and talk about the how and the what. He will explain how Divital is employing data science to improve the quality of operations, and will also share results from the field. But before getting tilted, let me introduce Divital to you. We are a professional services company headquartered in the Netherlands. Our business is anything to do with TV and video. Depending on the need of our customers, we can offer technology, consultancy, and video operations. We are very focused on our market domain, and we are vendor independent. We have customers of all types, service providers, broadcasters, content owners, and technology vendors. We have clients of all sizes, and we have them around the world. The company started a bit more than 20 years ago, when digital video was still in a very early stage. We managed to cope with all the changes in our industry, going from analog to digital, from digital to IPTV, moving to the cloud and not to big data. We managed to get the best out of the dot-com bubble burst and then the financial crisis about 10 years ago. And now we see that the COVID-19 pandemic is another opportunity for companies in our industry, in our domain, to accelerate and do things differently. We are also being viewed as an innovative company. We regularly make the list of the top 100 most innovative Dutch companies. Last year, the World Economic Forum has approached us to become their member, where the membership is invitation only, and the members are selected for their market influence and visionary leadership. But this presentation is not about Divital, it is about data-driven video delivery operations. So let's move forward and start with the why. Why do you need to be data-driven in operations, or actually in any area of a business? 
The simple answer is that because data-driven decisions are better than regular decisions, there are several academic studies suggesting that companies which use a data-driven approach have higher productivity than those which do not. The reason for that is that making decisions based on evidence is far more reliable than making decisions which are based on assumptions or just on perceptions. Using a data-driven approach, you will be able to identify trends over time which can inform effective practices, help you become aware of issues, and drive better actions. But becoming data-driven doesn't mean that you're just collecting data and looking at it on a kind of an ad hoc basis. To be truly data-driven, you need to approach every decision by analyzing relevant data, generating insights, and letting the insights drive the actions. But this is really easier said than done. Now the question comes, why do you need to be data-driven in operations? To answer this question, there is an important trend that I would like to emphasize here. And this is hyper-competition in the media landscape. Those who are listening in all know that video service providers are dealing with extreme competition in the market. Service providers are challenged by content fragmentation, platform fragmentation, and audience fragmentation. End users, content viewers, are using various devices to watch media content. And the content costs are increasing, which puts a big pressure on the service providers to run their operations as efficiently and as cost-effectively as possible. But what does it really mean for us who are involved in the video delivery? You can see it on the next slide. We have to accept that change is the only constant to meet the growing demands of people for media consumption. Getting video content from its creation to all the different end-user devices, let there be a mobile phone or a set-top box, is not an easy task. On one hand, service providers need to keep the viewers happy, deploy new features and functions, and fast, as fast as they can. On the other hand, they need to maintain the highest possible service quality with the lowest number of errors. And this is difficult because operations need to deal with many different ecosystem components. To support this argument, let's take a look at the newest version of our video delivery landscape. This video delivery landscape evolved from an internal tool that we used inside Divitel. A couple of years ago, we decided, I think it was three years ago, we decided to turn it into something everyone can access and use. Of course, this landscape is not static. It is dynamically changing, and we release new versions of it on a regular basis. The most recent version was released earlier this month and is available for download on our website. This landscape is an overview of all the different technologies that are necessary to consider when you design your video service. Devices, security, control, media intelligence, cloud and virtualization, these are all technologies to consider. If you zoom in and take a closer look at this landscape, you can see that for an end-to-end -end delivery solution, there are a large number of possible solution elements, which leads to a large number of possible permutations and to a large complexity. Our clients, the video service providers, do not always know which components work well and which one don't. In addition, they may not always know what will happen to their service performance once they replace a component or add a new one, or just change one of the components with a minor change. And the complexity is not just because of the number of end-to-end -end ecosystem elements. This is just one of the reasons. Another reason is how software is being developed today. When I'm turning to the next slide, I would like to remind you all that in the past, software had major releases, minor releases, and vendors issued releases just a couple of times per year. The fact is today that continuous integration and continuous deployment change the frequency of software updates. Now that software development become agile, it is much more difficult to manage the resulting complexity today than it was years ago. As an example, consider a TV service over a managed network. Think about the fact that application development teams need to build a user interface for many end user platforms. Uh, think of iOS, Android, web browsers, and set-top boxes. And they usually release multiple versions of the code during the year for each supported device and operating system type. Back on the server side, TV platform teams support maintenance updates and feature additions for the head end for the middleware. And there are many, many third-party software, such as players or DRM modules, which needs to be taken care of. So the complexity is there not just because of the number of end-to-end <clears throat> -end system elements, 
but also because of the number of changes that these elements are introducing into an end-to-end -end system and the interdependency of the elements. But what does it mean for the customers then? You don't run operations just to run operations. You do it to keep your customers happy. But how do you keep your customers happy in a hyper-competitive environment? You keep them happy by offering them the highest quality of service and the best quality of experience. But do we know what customers really care about when it comes to quality? Let's take a look at the next slide. <clears throat> Research data suggests that what drives customers away is not necessarily their dissatisfaction with the offering or with the price. The two most critical factors are the quality of service and the quality of customer care interactions. From both primary and secondary research, we know that in many cases, it only takes one bad experience for the customers to walk away. And this is dangerous because service providers may get only one chance. It can take, for example, one black screen, then the customer will try to reach customer service and that one single incident might determine whether that customer will remain a customer or leave to something else. In case of OTT over the top, the service provider might not even get a phone call. Customers just turn the service off, go watch something else, and never come back. So then how should we approach quality then? The quality of any video service can be evaluated by practically three dimensions. The first one is the quality of customer care. The second is the quality of experience, and the third is the quality of service. The quality of customer care is the area where a lot of perceptual value can be gained or lost. In theory, the information that is generated from the CRM or the OSS, BSS, or other customer-related systems should enable the customer care folks to do that job. The difficulty that we often find in the field here is that in most cases, the insights needed to solve end-user complaints are just simply not available. Some of the operational problems are not accessible to the first line or to the second line support people. And because of this, they cannot always properly address end user problems or concerns. The second quality dimension concerns the control plane. Here too, the back end and the front end work together through many different components, like the content management system or the recommendation engine. End users will have a good quality of experience when all components work together and they work together well. The difficulty in getting this quality of experience right is that problems can appear anywhere in the video chain, within or even outside of the control plane. The third video quality dimension relates to the transmission quality and to lower layer service availability. Here, the video content is delivered by processes like transcoding or ad insertion. And here again, it is not enough to only monitor low level metrics to guarantee excellent overall end-to-end -end quality. With these in mind, let's turn to the next slide where you can see a more holistic view of quality. The best way to understand an end-to-end -end ecosystem performance is to unify all data from the customer care plane, from the control plane, and from the video plane, and put all of them into a plane that we would call data and intelligence plane. From this data and intelligence plane, it then becomes possible to explore the performance of processes through the entire ecosystem and through all the components. And with this, and only with this, it becomes possible to monitor key metrics and correlate events. This holistic view makes it possible to perform better and faster root cause analyses. With this approach, we can identify which specific technology component is causing the problem, making troubleshooting or the orchestration of vendor fixes much more efficient. You will hear more about the details of how and what in my colleague's presentation. For now, let's focus on the benefits. This approach of having a holistic quality will enable service providers to handle the complexity, but also remain agile in a changing environment, which we need to take for granted. And the business benefits are quite straightforward. First, it will allow the service providers to focus on their core business. Second, it will allow the business people to introduce new services or bring new features faster to the market. Third, a data-driven approach to operations will result in higher quality, higher productivity, and it will ultimately increase customer satisfaction. This holistic approach is also a good framework to put machine intelligence, artificial, artificial intelligence into action and establish the first steps toward automation. 
With that said, this is really the end of my part of the presentation. If you have any question, I'm happy to answer them during the Q&A at the end. If you want to deep dive into the possible issues with implementation, you're also welcome to drop me an email to gabor.molnar at divital.com anytime after this webinar, and we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one session. Now I'm going to hand over the microphone to my colleague who will talk about the how and the what. Walter will explain how the problems related to complexity control can be fixed, and we'll also share results from our field deployments. To set the stage, his presentation will start with a short video teaser. At the end of the presentation, you will have a chance to view the entire video clip. The video is not only informational, but kind of funny. So make sure that you stay with us until the end. Walter, the virtual floor is yours. Sir. Welcome to Divital. How may I assist you today? Uh, I have an appointment. 11 o'clock, I presume. I was expecting you. This way, please, sir. Okay, thank you, Gabor. And welcome, everybody, who's attending our, our webinar. And welcome in our digital operating center where we are in the heart of the of the of the of running operations uh, today um okay first like like to summarize actually what gabor has just mentioned because just to get the problem straight i mean gabor you say that in a hyper competitive there is a hyper competitive media landscape um for me it actually starts to in my brain start to think about okay then i need to have a competitive advantage in this uh, hyper competitive area um, and it is not on logic in order to pursue operational excellence as a strategic main point and a driver into your organization or into your company actually it means that you create the ability uh, to deliver the right product at the right moment against the highest quality, but also against the lowest possible cost. But at the other hand, you know, you are actually talking about increased complexity, increased dynamics, and above all, that change is actually the only uh, constant. That is a challenging situation, what you actually described there. So the pursuit of excellence is under pressure there. So that must have a business uh, impact. And basically, um, what we call listening to the extreme customer voice, I think, you know, talking with our customers and potential customers is actually confirming that there is an issue in that perspective. Um, you know, companies running video operations today can be operators or ISPs, telcos, content owners, and even SaaS service provider as a part of a video delivery landscape or an ecosystem, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, they actually state in general that designing, building and operating and also performing lifetime cycle management of today's IPTV, OTT and SaaS platforms can be a real painful process. Operator and engineering teams are working around the clock to solve issues, but at the same time, they are experiencing the time to market of these systems can be extremely long much longer actually than they initially anticipated upon. While at the same time, if you go live, if you go to the market, the general customer quality perception and customer satisfaction uh, can be perceived as being low, which means that there is an increased uh, risk of, of churn and a very high risk of increasing of operational cost with possible even disappointing results. You know, they actually state that they are under constant pressure where employees are happy, bosses are unhappy, uh, and maybe you can also recognize that, for example, operations and marketing teams are constantly fighting over business versus operational uh, priorities. But it does make sense, though, because we had a transformation, what Gabor actually also pointed out, from let's say analog to what DVB into the world of the normal evolution towards IPTV, uh, OTT platforms and, uh, and SaaS platforms. Um, you are entering a much dynamic and complex world. And with complexity, we basically mean here is that you have, need, you have different components and these components need to interact to each other. 
in order to function as one single system. The more components you have, the higher the complexity you get. And another rule of thumb, the higher the complexity, the higher the cost. But this is not only having impact on the technology on its own. It's not a technology story only. But it has also impact on your organization, your people, and on your processes. Let's take, for example, take a um, orchestra where you have a instrument sections. You have the violins, you have the drums, and trumpet uh, section. You know, within the section, they basically can be the best players. And if you ask, ask, do a quality check on what they do as an individual group, that can be fantastic. But if you sit in the audience and they're not playing the same sheet of music, it's horrible. You can't listen to it. I mean, you're not coming back. And the chance that you are actually going to um, recommend somebody to go is really, really pretty low. You know, these dynamics uh, and complexity means it's, it's, it's due to this complexity and, and dynamics, it's more and more difficult to know what is going on. And if you don't know what is going on, it becomes extremely difficult to make the right and effective decisions. This phenomenon is actually called the lack of situation awareness, not knowing what is going on in order to make these, uh, these right decisions. And due, the due to the lack of situation awareness, the organization starts to navigate on assumptions. And for me, assumption-based operation is one of the main problems, the main drivers of slow and inefficient operations management, and therefore a driver for high operational cost, customer dissatisfaction, and the increased churn risk. This is very opposite to what you want to achieve to have a competitive advantage in the hyper-competition media landscape. Were we actually surprised on the conclusions and the feedback we are getting from the market? Honestly, not really. Because Divital as a company over the last 23 years, we transformed as well. Um, from, let's say, traditional SI for highly standardized systems in static environments, moving in the complexity and dynamics we see today. Also, we encountered increase of uh, project delivery and an increase in support requests and an increase of backlog questions, which is not easy to actually control back then. But also you know, a lot of ping pong, maybe you recognize it, between all involved parties leading to endless discussions without a proper solution. Then we started to realize that with the introduction of IPTV and OTT systems, the old model might not work anymore. We have entered this new world of digitalization, which we maybe underestimated in the beginning. We um, the, more or less we underestimated the impact on our organization, the people, processes, and also the technology. Since then, we have a new motto in the company. And the motto is, I have to change to stay the same all the time in order to turn challenges in great opportunities by bringing strong added value to the market in what we call back then the new world, as we actually do today. But where do you start? I mean, you can make a decision that you need to change all the time, but what is actually your change direction? First, set the goal. Our first goal is that the response effort in operations need to be fast and efficient. Actors from the different fields in this orchestra need to cooperate in a very efficient manner. And in order to perform fast and efficient video operation services, the shared situation awareness of the response organization, people, process, and technology needs to be excellent. Another driver for our direction, actually Gabor mentioned uh, scientific research, is the so-called O-ring of uh, the O-ring theory of technical of economical development, which I came across during my MIT uh, studies. Um, actually, here is Michael Kramer. He proves and also have the ability to quantify an intimate relation between quality and operational output. 
Actually, he named his theory after the 1986 uh, Space Shuttle uh, Challenger disaster, where an abnormal situation, an anomaly, an abnormal cold night before the actual launch of, uh, of the spacecraft, in relation with an undetected quality degradation of a $10 O-ring. Causes actually during the liftoff of the, the, the cause the owing to malfunction because it's supposed to seal off and, and uh, prevent leakage from the external fuel tank to the spacecraft failed during the liftoff and let the space shuttle explode and kill all seven crew members on board. Michael Kramer proved here that in dynamic and complex environments. So in, in uh, complex environments, the task of production must be executed proficiently together in order for any of them to be of a high value. Or in other words, any failure or quality reduction of any task reduces the value of the entire product in complex and dynamic environments. Let's try to project the O-ring theory to what we call our OTT native cloud platform blueprint. From my customer perspective, we include everything in our blueprint that could have an impact on the quality of experience of the end user. So from contact production to contact acquisition, including information and data coming from customer care centers, connecting front end with back ends, uh, include all kinds of clients, uh, uh, data and information, and also networks, even in-home Wi-Fi networks on a managed way in order to have a complete overview about what's going on. Michael Kramer proved the quantity concept is that a drop of 1% in quality is actually uh, reducing productivity with 10%. In an operational translation, you could also state that a drop of 1%, so a 99% quality insurance, they introduce 10% of waste. So what's waste? Waste is all your activities that you deploy over the platforms into your organizations who are not having an added value. So basically, it's example is rework, first time right principles. If you do things not right the first time, then everything do everything after your first attempt is waste. Do things a second time, or maybe a third time, and a fourth time, it's all waste. Another example is unplanned work. The percentage of unplanned work. How many outages do you have on system? How many situations do you encounter into your organization which you were not prepared for upfront? Another example is going changes over the systems. In assumption-based operations, specifically when there is no insights on quality, there is no situation and awareness across the chain. You have any idea of how many percentage of changes are actually not fixing target issue, it's 85%. So 85% of the time you're actually introducing waste into your system. Unplanned work. Out of 80% of these situations, you even get more issues than you actually anticipated upon, including regression. 5% drop of quality means an introduction of 40% of waste. And another 5% down, you already have 65% additional waste into the system. That's not really operational. Excellent. So what if you don't know what is going on? What, what if you have no quality indicators? What are your weak spots? I mean, the weakest performance element, because make no mistake, if you say 90% is not an average of 90% quality performance, it's a single O-ring in your whole system is actually causing that the whole system is dropping down to a 90% quality perception and a 60% waste generation. How do you know what the end-to-end -end performance actually is? 
And how do you know what your priorities are? How do you know that you actually are improving system performance? Are you sure that you're not making it worse? If you change one element, how does this impact the rest? And how do you make migrate? I mean, change is the only constant, isn't it? But how do you migrate to new technology on operational life systems, safe and sound? What you actually need to do is start connecting the dots. With connecting the dots, we actually aim to connect all production means to enable their interaction in real time. How did we do it? First of all, adopting organizational changes where we incorporate DevOps-minded people. So develop with an ops optimization in mind. Put your end user central. Team players with a high quality perception and adopt DevOps procedures and deploy and benefit from technical technology driven by the fourth industrial revolution with cross-cutting impacts of emerging technologies. Because we are living in an era where the big fish is no longer eating the small fish anymore, but where the fast fish is eating the slow ones, as said by Klaus Schwab, he's the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. Communication among the different players and the connected objects in the production line are made possible by mastering technology like big data analytics, cloud, full automation, and the deployment of artificial intelligence. By mastering operations management processes and procedures by building a fantastic team of people and an agile organization, we are delivering higher quality and create fast and efficient operations management across the end-to-end -end delivery chain. The impact, 60 times fewer deployment failures. In the case actually have few, but uh, in, the, in, in case of a failure, you create the ability for mean time to repair 160 times, 168 times faster. But above all, you put positioning yourself in the hyper competitive landscape with the competitive advances and the ability to be 200 times faster and more efficient than your current competition. We have transformed the complete, transformed the complete company where we are today, creating situation awareness for delivery and operations processes in order to obtain and maintain accurate decision making processes in real time. But above all, we day after day gradually optimize production tools, optimize processes, efficiency, quality, and speed, and also optimize endless possibilities towards the future. Actually, in the partnership together with you, where we share data across ecosystem channels, and that data is coming from multiple applications and solutions. With our approach, we create a cost-effective way to connect and correlate all of the data and build this 360-degree situation awareness. We do not believe that we have a one-size-fits-all solution. So based on the consultancy part, we actually go to determine what is needed and what's done, what is needed to be done. In deployments, we can actually support the project deliveries. We can also outsource them to us. Operations, we can augment your teams on a temporary basis, but you can also outsource operations to us and be a part of this magnificent DIFTO operating center. Okay, what can be the impact then? So let me give you a volatile for example, it's a real use case. An IPTV, OTT, and a DVB system goes live with a lack of situation awareness. Let's say a reduced situation awareness. In this situation, there is a correlation between the customer growth and the number of incidents reported by customers. Actually, it means the more customers you have on the platform, the number of incidents reported to customer care are increasing in the same manner. There's also a correlation between the changes applied and the increase of customer complaints. Remember, 85% of changes are not fixing the target issue. 80% of more of additional issues 
are being implemented due to the lack of situation awareness. But there is also a correlation between incident changes and problems which are continually reoccurring. That's really also a waste driver. Incidents will come back on and on and on, and at the, at the end, they will not be fixed. It's like a dog, you know, chasing his tail all the time, running around in circles. We have been contracted to augment the operators' operations team and build teams for projects where we designed operations management procedure, a data strategy, and migration and deployment plans. In full partnership with the operator and the different vendors, we were able to turn the tie. After designing, building, and implementing the new way of working, we've achieved the following. Incidents reports from customers drop dramatically. Mean time to, in, in, to investigate dropped to immediately. Correlations between changes and increased customer incident does not exist anymore. An actual change is an actual proven quality increase. And problems, reoccurring incidents dropped as well. How much quality indicators like root cause analysis were 80% faster, 65% fewer tickets. As a matter of fact, today we run more tickets coming out of the automated systems than it will come from the customer side. 50% faster mean time to recover and an increase in first time right percentages of 40%. Customer satisfaction increased upsell increased and there's a growing customer base and by the way there is no relationship anymore between the growing customer base and the number of tickets which are coming in and above all the customers are less likely to churn i mean so far so good but is there more to be honest yes knowing more means not always getting the right answers right away as a matter of fact, knowing more leads generally to more questions. Back to the OTT blueprint means, I, mean, I didn't count them exactly, but let's say it's roughly 50 components. That means already about 1,225 one-on-one -on -one relationships. But we're not only coping with one-on-one -on -one relationships, we're dealing with a lot of variables. Since more knowledge leads to more questions, engineering teams can be overwhelmed by data which needs to be turned into information, which needs to lead to knowledge. Here, our data strategy, supported by artificial intelligence technology, like machine learning and deep learning uh, technology comes around the corner. General problem of AI, machine learning, deep learning principles today is asking the right question. Methodology and tools are not the hard task. They are actually easily available. The hard part is to apply methodology and tools to solve real-time problems. But you require the data. Secondly, you require asking the right questions, organizing that data. And as last, you need to label the data that reveals back to the questions you actually ask. If not, then AI and machine and, and, and data deployments will not leave lab or stay in proof of cause status forever. That will be a disappointment. In our quest towards to continually improve our understanding of quality, status, and insights, machine and our people are working closely together. Via supervised machine learning, machines are increasingly taking over repetitive tasks and will unburden workforces. But at the same time, human and machine are challenging each other. For example, system detects a learned anomaly. Alarm goes off alerting the ops team based on the correlation between an increasing response time between client and backend and an increased response exceeding the normal limit. Versus same time, different day, different pattern, bringing more questions on the table, which requires in-depth domain knowledge to further develop the algorithm and logic behind it towards the next step in quality improvement of the systems. Where are we heading to? 
Today, it means no more reactive SLAs, where first a massive outage affecting, let's say, more than 100,000 households is required to qualify for a P1 and to have the right on support in accordance with these, let's call it not customer friendly support contracts. Now, today we deliver services where a P1 is reported when 25 devices or more are reporting an anomaly behavior within the sliding window of 15 minutes time frame. But appropriate actions are taken before a customer even experiences service degradation. Well, we work to bring 25 devices back to one single device, which we can treat as a P1 situation. Same applies for our project deliveries and migration projects to make them safe and make them sound. We believe on the horizon that in 2025, we created the ability to build and maintain and manage a fully automated AI-driven platform for full autonomous operations in the field of video delivery systems. What did we learn over time? A lot. Too much to discuss everything in this in this webinar. But again, quality speed, they are very, very closely related. Culture is absolutely important in your company and in your, your organization. Just remember, culture is eating your strategy for breakfast. Create a learning environment. You have to make, you have, must have the ability and it must be uh, secure and safe into your company to make mistakes. But you also need to understand that you should not make the same mistake twice. Stop acting on assumption. That's the no-brainer of the story today. Is Only act on proof and apps and automate to the maximum. Put innovation first, but do not put it into a department or a person. Innovation comes from everybody into your company, from annoying things and making Make sure that you have the ability to adopt all kinds of initiatives coming from everywhere and anybody into your company. Move fast, fix things. Most of our customers are very busy with their daily operations. We realize that and are able to keep and maintain a status quo between the current customer satisfaction and the daily operational effort. Most of the time in firefighting modus. In these circumstances, it's not easy to turn the ship or leave the harbor to start sailing on the cloudy and sometimes rough, stormy IPTV OTT ocean. We at Divito can assist you with this. With our experience, our domain expertise, technology, operational processes, we can augment your teams. It can also be temporary to design, build, and manage your digital transformation, where we can realize and optimize fast and efficient video operation management across your organization. You can then benefit from fast and first time bright project deliveries, speeding up time to market for your products and starting at a high quality service to your customers from day one. We are here to help to realize fast, efficient and safe operations management. Faster, better and easy. I can imagine that you still have a lot of questions a lot of comments, which we can, do not have the time and the ability in order to answer in the Q&A answer. You can reach out to me at walter.slot at digital.com. And I'm happy to actually reach out to you to give more background and insights and more information. Okay, digital marketing team. Now it's time to bring our new corporate movie into the world. Yes, so actually, Stay, stay tuned and enjoy Divital's corporate movie. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Divital. How may I assist you today? Uh... I have an appointment. Eleven o'clock, I presume. I was expecting you. This way, please, sir. David, can you arrange some coffee and tea in conference room one, please? My database tells me that you are interested in a lot of different topics. Yes, exactly. On my way over here, I was thinking, what do I do with my legacy and what new technology do I need? We 
deal with these questions on a daily basis. We have 20 years of experience. Here you go. We offer everything from technology scoping and architectural design to system integration and solution deployments to help you create a maximum performance video service. Would it also be possible for you to manage our video service on premise? Yes, but there is no need. This is our state-of-the-art operating center in the Netherlands. We are experts at running video operations remotely. On your premises, in the cloud, or a hybrid. Ah! And what about picture quality? Black screens and restart problems? Our video service is locked in silos, so we can't identify the cause of these critical failures and fix them. So can you help us with that too? Of course, let me show you our statistics. It's a PowerPoint I'm continuously updating. Didn't finish the design yet, but the data is accurate. Very impressive. But how do you ensure that any improvements you make are actually the right ones and do not cause any further regression? We apply a silo-smashing, 360-degree data-driven strategy. Sugar? Ooh. I'm sorry, I have to go now. Um, this looks very promising. And I'll be back soon, okay? Sure, take your time. Keep an eye on your inbox. Our offer will transform your operations. Hmm, transform. Ah, oh, sound of that. Transforming. Transformers. David, didn't we see a film about that? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gabor and Walter. Um, please, we're about to move into the Q&A session. Uh, please feel free to keep submitting those questions. We've had a few uh, questions uh, already in the box, but please feel free to submit as many questions as you, as you like uh, for the next 10 minutes. Um, when we'll be taking those and pushing them to uh, to our two presenters. Um, while they're answering those questions, please take a moment to answer the feedback form that appears at the bottom of your screen. Uh, and with that, we'll go into the uh, the Q and A part of the uh, of the webinar. So the first question up. Um, is uh, from what I understand, we should be able to deploy a data management tool uh, and start working in this data-driven way. Is that correct? Um, so perhaps, uh, Volta, would you care to take a stab at that one? Hi, Volta. Yes, I think you're you're on there. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I was on mute. It's a system. Um, actually, that's not right. Um, you know, the ability to deploy a data management tool is not. Um, again, I think what I said is um, that tools and methodology they are randomly and easily uh, available. It's about. Um, you know the, the, the combination of, of 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 tooling and mastering it, and then and, and pursue the excellence in terms of processes, people, uh, and 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 tools. Uh, there, it's so no, it's not about deploying a data management uh, tool, which is happening a lot though. Uh, to to be to be honest, to to be honest, and you know that will not have the desired impact on your uh, on your strategy. And the and the uh, pursuit of excellence, and that's with this perspective. So it's too narrow. A tool only won't help. Okay, how it's great. Produced. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty clear. Um, second question up is: How long does it take after you implement um, a data approach that you can see positive results? I mean, maybe you can sort of highlight some of the, the cases you've, you've looked at here. What, what's what's the sort of timeline before you see positive results from uh, from implementing this? Uh, you asking to me again, uh, Stuart? Um, maybe Gabor, Gabor can can have a go at that. Yeah. No, and practically the answer is it, it depends. I mean, it really depends on the situation because 
most of the time we get engaged uh, with the customer. We understand what the what the uh, key metrics they'd like to improve, and depending on those key metrics, uh, then we can we can together come up with a plan and 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 drive the action. So the question is a good question, but it's a very general question to address it, saying that it's like a three month or a six month or a year. But our experience with dealing with projects that uh, once we, we 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 have a proof of value very uh, soon within a question of a few months we can we can deliver those results which trigger the customer to move forward to a more extensive and exhaustive uh, way of, of 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 getting data driven approach to addressing problems maybe maybe i get add something there gabor it's it's uh, short you but it's also really depending where you are in this quality ladder uh, you know uh, let, let's go back to the michael kramer or in theory <clears throat> If you actually have a 99% quality um, guarantee over your system, you have these insights. I mean, I mean they are a pretty mature organization, but there's still you have the ability to uh, get, you know, uh, away from another 10% waste into a system because it's really a lot still to gain. Uh, in these circumstances, you know, then you're moving much more to an AI approach already, uh, because most probably already had the data approach to reach the 99% there. On the other hand, if you have, let's say, 70 to 80 percent, um, let's say, quality maturity, then a data approach uh, deployment will, will have more or less immediate effect because around 80 percent quality perception, you are actually only firefighting. And uh, then you have a 0 0.02 uh, percent of operational excellence being achieved. So there's a, actually what you do on a daily basis is already waste. So if we can bring up that number from 80 to 90, then a, a data-driven approach will have a very, very, very fast uh, result. And then we're talking about maybe one to two months already. Great, okay, very interesting stuff. Um, next question is from Vincent Plissoni at Orange. Um, how do you deal with live sessions vis-a-vis uh, -vis things like impact to the network and latency. Um, Voltaire, I don't know, perhaps you want to take that also. Uh, actually, we do this. Uh, and more or less the same topic. So what we can do on a case-to-case -case basis, build a data um, a data plan and a data project, which is having a start and an end, of course. But we also do this for especially SaaS providers, where actually do live sessions uh, on the continuity basis 24 7 where we have already pre-integrated uh, data uh, strategy implemented including a whole state-of-the-art monitoring uh, solution that's also what we do with live sessions including low latency uh, deployments good okay excellent thanks for that and we have a question from Meta Vihari Dharma Vahini, who is asking, he's a content provider, and he just wants really to, to know what areas are you able to help us in as, as a content provider? For you, Gabor. Perhaps that's quite a general question. Maybe, Gabor, you'd like to <laughs> push that. Well, uh, uh, yes, it is a general question. Well, one, one of the best way, uh, and it's similar to the technical questions, is, is to, to get engaged with the customer to understand the priorities, to understand objectives. I mean, if you're a content provider, uh, maybe it's a good idea to, to have a discussion about what, what's your strategy, how you want to monetize your content, what are your key objectives in what time frame. We have a strategy navigator session. Uh, you can check it out on our website and, uh, and see what kind of uh, engagement, what kind of session we start with the customer, where your priorities are. Our experience is that once we get into a uh, boardroom or into a room of uh, the management of the company, sometimes even those uh, priorities are conflicting. So it's a very good idea to get engaged with the customer to get an onboarding session and have the priorities straight. So most of the time, that's the way as we get engaged with the customer, with a content provider, that would be a similar way. If, if you want to get more details, I'm very happy to take it offline and we can get a deep dive into the strategy navigator session, what we do. Yeah, because yeah, that's my that's immediate really. response there. It, because, you know, respond to this question, I would really say, okay, let's get in contact to see where you are actually, uh, where do you need the help? So we can focus on that. Very curious. Right. It's a, it's a tailored approach that, that's uh, required. Huh? Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. 
Um, so the next question, if we want to add new functionality, such as a recommendation engine, how do we know which solutions or technology to choose? Um, there are so many vendors out there. Uh, who'd care to take that one? Maybe, uh, Volta, you'd like to have a go at that. I, I think uh, very similar to the previous question that we had um, is that, uh, again, every customer protection customer is absolutely unique. I have not seen and I've visited and, and, and been uh, attached to a lot of uh, customers there. There is not one single system similar to any other system. So everything is unique. Uh, again, there is no one size fits all solution uh, there. So even, for example, if you require a recommendation engine, what are your business uh, objectives specifically for you as the company? What's your strategy? What's your approach? What is then the most um, convenient and the most um, effective technology which we come to implement. It's really based on what, what, what you do. You need it on-prem. Do you have a cloud strategy? Yes or no? Why not? Uh, and, and so on. It's also, it's everything is going into what we then call um, our our uh, onboarding um, way of, of working there. We need to understand what your objectives are and then we come to the best recommendation for the recommendation engine. In this in this specific example, yeah, and we are Gabor, and we are you... independent. So we are an independent service right. uh, integrator, so we can actually uh, bring best breach of every brand uh, towards your uh, solution. Great, yeah, Gabor, have you anything to add to that, or does that pretty much cover it? No, it's it's pretty much. I mean, in many cases, I mean, these are excellent questions, but it's it's not an easy Q and A. I mean, the answer in many times, it depends. The, the yeah. importance of us as being vendor independent is that we can assess the situation, we can work for the customer together with the customer, and then work to get to uh, to a stage where the customer's key KPIs can be met. Okay, great. Um, we're running fairly close to our time limit, but we've one sort of very general question again coming in. How do you know what to do with the data once you've collected it? Um, Gabor, do you want to have a, a go at that one? Yeah, I'm happy to, but uh, it's, 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 it's an excellent question because our experience is that in many cases, uh, service providers or, or, or broadcasters or, or companies are, are hiring uh, data scientists and you have a, maybe a department of data scientists and they collect all the data. But it's, it's not really the collection of data. Of course, it's a, it's a procedure which, which, uh, which is important, uh, timely and cumbersome. Uh, but it's not, not just the tools when it comes to data science. It's really asking the right questions. So what, what to do with the data once you collected it? You have to have the domain knowledge. You have to have the experience. You have to be able to ask the right questions. So this is why it's important to start from really from the bottom line, what you want to achieve, and then have the domain specialist together working with, with, the, with the business drivers, with the business uh, folks in the company to determine what needs to be done. And then come up with a plan and, 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 and use the tools. So data science itself is not a solution. It, it is just a tool to solve the problems. Great. Walter, anything to add? No, not, not much. You have a technical uh, answer to this. So basically it means that we collecting the data, bring it to the data lake and start to build correlations in between them, uh, in, in, in this data lake, so that we can have a strong correlation in between all types of technology, which gives us uh, um, logs and matrices. Now there, but yeah. you have also, of course, the business uh, part there, and that is absolutely important. Again, when I also did the talk in the presentation, you know, the challenge is always, you know, ask the right question with the domain knowledge you have. Otherwise, the machine is not going to work for you, and uh, giving outcomes which you actually did not expect it. Um, as a matter of fact, you also need to have the ability to check, change, and correct outcome of uh, of, uh, of of the machines. Uh, initially, you need to supervise and let them learn. In actually, we are still the teachers for them, otherwise it's never going to be effective. Right, absolutely. Okay, thanks very much. Um, I think we've just run out of time. So I'd like once again to thank our presenters, uh, Gabor Molnar and Volta Slot for uh, a very insightful and outstanding presentation. Um, and thank you, the audience, for, for joining us. Um, we'd also like to thank Divitel for sponsoring today's event. So uh, on behalf of Digital TV Europe, thanks very much. Thanks again for, for being with us. Have a productive remainder of the day. Thanks very much. Good. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.